Hey, I'm Ron Drodos from KeyboardImprov.com and welcome to our journey through the real book number 239. Yes, we're going through the real book tune by tune and we're trying to come to a place of understanding about these tunes, these jazz standards where we um, know uh, the circumstances they were created in, if possible, the culture they came out of, some of the musical ideas they use, uh, how people have performed them, and uh, then that enables us to come to our own um, uh, interpretations much better, um, both to get started and also in the long run, because this is a long game, right? This is not a sprint. This is a marathon, right? We're just going to go slow and steady, slow and steady through our musical development, however you know, many decades that is, right? It's, it's, a, it's a journey. That's why I'm calling this journey through the real book. It's journey through the real book chronologic or not chronologically, sequentially, uh, alphabetically, but it's also our journey through the real book and standards in general as we take our musical journey through our lives. So thanks for joining me here. So mood indigo, right? Mm -hmm. Great, great, great tune by Duke Ellington. If you look at the bottom here, the date is correct. It's 1931. Whoa, Ellington was, um, I think, the only jazz band leader who kept his band together for uh, five decades. Started in the 20s, made it all the way to the 70s. So the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, into the 70s. Um, five decades. And um, uh, everybody else, even Basie's band, um, they didn't start in the 20s, they started in the 30s, but uh, lasted longer. But um, uh, Basie's band broke up for a year or two, around 1950, 51. Uh, times were tight for big bands back then. Um, and Ellington kept his band going because he had royalties from his compositions, including Mood Indigo. Uh, but so he could take those royalties and pay the musicians, even if they weren't making as much on gigs that they would have needed to keep the band together. He, he wanted to hear his compositions played um, on a daily basis by bands, and that, that's why he did it too. So, a um, couple things to know. First of all, if you listen to the original recording of this, you will not hear this. You'll hear this. Because that's in B flat, not A flat as it is in here. And I don't know why. A flat really works well. It's a nice mellow key. But, um, but the original is in B flat. I don't know why. I played in A flat too. I played this tune a lot. I played it in, uh, when I was in college with the vocal group I was in. We played this for 20,000, 30,000 people sometimes, 20, 25, 30 at the uh, New Haven Jazz Festival every year. We opened for Dave Brubeck, um, Glenn Miller Orchestra, people like that, um, Lionel Hampton. We used to play for huge crowds and they loved it. It was a great, I came up with an, a vocal arrangement for four parts. I also did it in New York City with some vocalists when I first moved here. I and, and solo piano on many, many gigs. It's a great tune. It's kind of, it can go bluesy, it can go a little mellow, you can play a little faster on it at times. Um, there's a video on YouTube of Ellington playing this where he plays a very fast kind of intro with one of these parallel chords. It was very fashionable in the late 20s, early 30s to do that. Um, almost semi-classical in a way. Um, this was his big, first huge, huge, huge hit. He had had other songs which have become classics. They're early Ellington. You don't hear them as much anymore. Things like East St. Louis, Toodaloo, uh, The Mooch, great tunes, great, great tunes. But uh, Black and Tan Fantasy, another one. But this, this was the one. This was the taste of things that were going to come for him. A um, couple things to know, uh, whether you play it in uh, B flat or A flat. We'll, we'll, we'll look at it in A flat here because it's in the real book. Maybe the original sheet music was in A flat and that's why it's here. I don't know. Um, but it's the key most people play it in. Unless you're working with a vocalist, you might transpose it to their key. Um, so uh, one interesting thing is that the, uh, the chord in measure three is incorrect. And it might have even been this in the sheet music, the B flat minor seven. It sounds pretty logical. We start on the one chord, and then we go to the dominant seventh on two, and then a two, five, one. It's the same as take the A train. Right? It's the same first four measures here are like the first eight of take the A train. Just doubled. Think about that. Billy Strayhorn wrote take the A train based maybe. Well, it was also on exactly like you and other standard, but it's also coincidentally or not the first four measures of um, Mood Indigo. So, um, but Ellington didn't do this actually in a, in a way. He might have... Um, 
I don't know why it ended up in the sheet music like this, but the, um, well, I have a theory we'll talk about in a second. So uh, it goes from the one chord, A flat major seven, to B seven, but then the, the third measure actually goes E minor, then E augmented. See? It's fascinating, fascinating. And it's because of the voice leading in the clarinet, trumpet, and uh, trombone that Ellington wanted. Those are the voicings. Um, if you want to see the actual voicings, just Google Mood Indigo, um, I guess, chords, Ethan Iverson on one of his blogs. It's, um, uh, discusses Ellington, and it, he has a little transcription, and it's clearly an F, in the key of B flat, it's an F minor. It's interesting. So, but why would it be a 2 5 here? So, it's not that the real book's necessarily wrong, because they, their intention with the real book was to use the chords that musicians played. So certainly by the 70s, when the real book was being made, people were playing a, a 2 5 one here. Their intention wasn't to do the original Ellington chords. You don't really see that too much in, in um, um, uh, uh, fake books. What you see is the version that jazz musicians tend to play, and or versions, if there's multiple versions in different fake books. So uh, jazz musicians like to play 2 5 ones, especially it's from the 40s on. So they would take all these things that were like idiosyncratic. Okay, I gotta remember this tune does this, this does this, this one uses a diminished chord. Oh no, we're just gonna make them all two fives, which actually sounded pretty hip and current in the early 40s, late 30s to the 40s. Um, bebop would do that all the time. So for all the sort of nod to out of the box and creative thinking in jazz, the chord progressions tend to become standardized over time from these old standards, whereas Gershwin and Ellington and Cole Porter would sometimes use these unusual harmonies, and they, they almost got a little, little more bland over time. So I'm not saying the real book's wrong, because I think their intention, well, I know their intention, was to um, use the real chords that jazz musicians used. But in the sense of, is it Ellington's? Mm, not always, right? So we can decide which ones we want to use. Um, a lot of things you can do on this tune. You could do it sort of this, these quarter notes, almost like guitarist, chunk, 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 chunk. We can play stride. Ellington likes these. You just take any open voicing, fourths or fifths or whatever, and you just kind of go bing, bing. Big aspect of Ellington's playing. Uh, it's decorative, but it's also, um, but in a really great way. It's like literally the icing on the cake, very fancy. And then um, one thing I didn't notice until recently, even though I've been playing this for decades, is that the first and the half, second half of the tunes are basically the same chords, except for this F7 right there. But otherwise, it's, it's almost exactly the same chords for the, the two halves of the tune. I've never, ever really noticed that before until recently. So um, what I'm going to do is... Um, uh, kind of combine, I, I've listened to so much Ellington over the years that um, when I play one of his tunes, it just gets filtered through that, which, which I think is kind of cool. I, I, I love playing that way. Uh, sometimes it sounds more like him than at other times, but I, I try to make it me, but we're going to hear some, some Ellington in here. So um, uh, let's just see where this goes. I'm not necessarily trying to do anything uh, unbelievably uh, creative, well, creative, yes, but but not um, innovative. I'm just playing the tune the way I play it, and um, sometimes it'll hold you back if you try to play tunes always like, okay, I've got to play better than I ever have before. Just, just learn it and play it the way you play it, and then over time, you'll improve and get more comfortable with these things. But don't try to force the issue. Yes, practice a lot, but at the same time, accept where we're at and kind of embrace it. It's not even accepting where we're at. It's embracing where we're at with a tune. So. Uh, here we go, mood indigo.
Lots of fun playing a tune like that. And um, also when we play a tune that we've known for decades, we can, we, we, we're inside it. We can do some of that sort of chromatic, you know, whatever it is. We know the tune so well, we can, we can put in substitute chords. We can use different voicings that, we can do um, chromatic harmony and, or harmonic lines inside the chords. We can do different textures. That's why I encourage you, whatever level you're at, even at the very beginning stages, to start learning a lot of tunes. You don't have to take every one through all the paces and improvise and all this. Just get to know like 10, 20, 30 tunes with the melody and the chords as soon as you can so that they become like old friends after a while. That's the main thing. So uh, yeah, we're learning how to understand these tunes and to play them our own way. Thanks for joining me here. If you'd like to start my video course, I've got hundreds of lessons in there for you from beginning through advanced jazz and blues and everything in between uh, to really help you become fluent with your playing. That's, that's my main goal with these videos and the video course. So thanks for joining me here, and as always, enjoy the journey. Let the music flow.